Welcome back. President Trump once again claiming vindication in the Russian collusion probe with the Mueller team's indictments against Russians for election interference. And he's actually getting support from Clinton era special counsel Ken Starr. There's not a word in the indictment that suggests collusion. In fact, there's a word that suggests non-collusion. And that's the word unwittingly that's right. that appears early on in the indictment. And that was in connection with Florida. It was not in connection with folks at Trump Tower. But our next guest says it's not quite that simple. Joining me now to weigh in on that and the cyber threat posed by Russia is security analyst Ryan Morrow. Ryan, good to see you as always. Why isn't it that simple? Well, it's because there are a whole slew of accusations against Trump accusing him of colluding with Russia. So on the one hand, Trump can accurately say that the indictments indicate that his campaign was not involved with Russia's social media campaign. In fact, Russia was playing both sides. Uh, Pro-Trump forces and anti-Trump forces were being promoted by Russia. But when it comes to the greater question of collusion uh, that Democrats and others are accusing Trump of, well, that investigation and question still remains. So this issue is not going away. Okay. But Ryan, I, I have to ask you, you heard Rod Rosenstein say it in the press conference and you heard Ken Starr just allude to it. The phrase that Rosenstein used was there was no American knowingly. Ken Starr referenced the wittingly. That shows there wasn't that like conscious effort to do anything wrong. And the fact that no American did anything, Trump obviously is an American. How do you reconcile that Sure. Well, when you look at the indictments and the language that's used, it's related to the crime that they're accusing the Russians of, which is the social media campaign and identity fraud. And that's just one element of the whole collusion debate uh, that's going on. Now, I suspect uh, that Trump was not colluding with the Russians personally. Um, I don't see how that makes any sense from the Russian perspective. But I'm worried that the political ramifications of this are going to help the Russian objective and make and really shield us from understanding the greater objective here, which is that this is a very cunning ideological attack on America's democracy by Russia, by pitting us against each other. And Russia understands right. that if Americans cannot productively discuss their disagreements, then our democracy cannot function properly. And then that damages the movement for freedom around the world. That's what strong men like Putin need. And that's a key point that I think was lost in some of the analysis that we've seen on other networks over the course of the weekend. That said, you did hear Trey Gowdy reference that. You heard Ken Starr. And you also heard the Facebook ad exec. I thought this was fascinating when this came out. Rob Goldman tweets that Russia didn't want to influence the election. Uh, he writes, this was on Friday, very excited to see the Mueller indictment today. We shared Russian ads with Congress, Mueller, and the American people to help the public understand how the Russians abused our system. Still, there are key facts about the Russian actions that are still not well understood. Now, here's an interesting, the most interesting line. Most of the coverage of Russian meddling involves their attempt to affect the outcome of the 2016 election. I have seen all the Russian ads, and I can say very definitively that swaying the election was not the main goal. And that really sort of underscores what you're saying. The goal is to ruin American democracy. Exactly. Uh, we are failing to understand the ideological dimension of Putin's strategy that has been in place for years. And you can tell by the propaganda that the Russians have been putting out. And we are failing to understand what the greatest weakness of Putin is, which is the threat from within. And so how does he best handle the movement for freedom that he faces? Well, if you discredit American democracy, you make democracy look like an illusion or something not desirable, then he can undermine his own opposition. And that's what strongmen around the world want. So from the perspective of strongmen like Putin, our hyper-partisanship is our greatest weakness and therefore their greatest strength. And it's important for Americans to realize that. We need people like yourself and your community there in counterterrorism to come together and fight the bad guys. But we need America to come together to not let this happen again. Ryan Morrow, thank you very much, sir. Always good to see thank you. you.